Hey everybody. It's uh January 5th and I figured it's about time for me to get out my year review of 2020. So I think this is all the ones I've gotten done so far this year or last year. This would be 26 cars. I do have other builds. I'm going to do a different video for that. But this is just going to be the cars, not the figures, planes, dioramas, tanks. Uh, uh, what else is there? Planes. I guess that's it for those. That will be on another episode. So this is a quick overview of what I got. I think if I count it right, I got 26 cars, which is pretty good. I don't know which one my favorite is. I think it is between the Willies or the Woodies, um, the Mustang, the. RX-7 did turn out pretty good and probably the police car from James Bond it might be my favorite ones um, but they are my builds I have ain't disappointed in any of them so I think I love them all but let's do a quick review on all of them So not to go in any particular order, uh, I'm going to review some of these kits and try to get through all of them, but I'm going to try to make this video not as super long. Uh, these two, the one is the, the Ford Mustang, uh, the, the race version. It was a very fun kit, but on this one I used uh, the Rust-Oleum 2X black, and then I thought, well, the black or the Rust-Oleum 2X clear would work perfect over it. So I decaled it up, sprayed that clear on it, and it bubbled up like you wouldn't believe. So at that time I had to, I could not find any replacement decals. So what I ended up doing was wet sanding the hell out of it. Wet sand clear, wet sand clear, until I could get it smooth. And the finish on that is still a little rough but I am extremely happy I was able to save those decals uh, a few viewers has told me the taillights are upside down so now that I actually have it in a out of the box or out of the display case I'm gonna try to do that before I put it away the other one is the Ford Capri uh, that one I actually spent a lot of time on the inside I had the wiring I had the fuel lines you can see some of the details as it goes around. I carbon fibered some of the pieces. It was an older Tamiya kit. And uh, all the decals on the front end up cracking. So then I had to do some water, or some acrylic. Try to match some acrylic to match that. End up fixing that. Cleared that. Buffed that really nice. Uh, they're not very good well done painted models but they do look good so I am not too upset about those uh, they still are one of my top favorite ones also with the decals on the Capri I had to cut those out and do the clear coat on them because as soon as they hit water they would end up cracking the one on the hood, the elephant, he ended up cracking really bad. This one cracked really bad. And after those two cracked, I uh, I completely stopped. I said, well, I'm going to have to look into how to fix it. I found a way to do it. It actually worked. So in the end, I was actually pretty happy with it. Here we have two import tuner cars I pretty much made. The one is the Skyline, the other one is the RX-7. The RX-7 I did do a buddy build with Keith. 
he did the same kit and we completely made completely different cars without even knowing it we both just went at it and tried it this one I did some flocking inside you can see it on the rear I had customized that wing to work on that model since it is a hatchback everything else I pretty much left factory on it I did the lights up and everything like that I actually really enjoyed that kit it's a very basic kit but it ended up turning out great now the skyline that is a Tamiya kit of course with the clear hood I still have not decided on what I'm going to do with that hood more than likely I'm going to just paint it I end up buying another one of these kits because I have another skyline from a different manufacturer that does not have all the detail that this chassis does and I'm going to put the body on it so that way I can kind of kit bash them and with all the detail this kit has there is no firewall detail at all which kind of blows my mind but I got a lot of nice detail on the bottom Let's see if I can get focused the other cars actually hit my hand but I didn't go all crazy but I did do a nice weathering on the bottom to make it look like a real car a little bit of rust on there you ain't gonna find a, a brand new car that don't even have rust on there so there's those two very happy with them this one I didn't do any weathering on the bottom because it is such a basic kit there ain't even enough detail on the bottom to even want to show anybody but you guys because you guys actually understand how these kits are so there is my Ford pickup and then my Ford Roadster now this Roadster is a very basic kit it's an old kit I can't remember when it originally comes out but it was one of those kits they actually pulled back and let go and it goes flying across the room I did this as a as the uh, 24 hour build so it is the lacquer paint uh, the, and if you see the transmission the transmission actually stops right there but you know what you better not be touching my models looking underneath them so only I get to show people but it is a very fun kit it was able to be done in 24 hours so that was good the Ford I can't remember exactly what year but the Ford ended up being like an Iron Man I did a lot of detail in the bottom of that this kit is really good for detailing because it has all the independent parts the engines actually look quite similar actually wired all that did a nice job weathering it and the, probably the best part of the weathering is the actual bed they put some nice grain detail in there so when you put a wash in there you can get a real nice wood look and same with the wood slats on the side I don't know if I have another one of those kits but that's a kit that would actually be very fun to build again so here is the Paul Walker build and then one that's quite recently been done is the GT40 now the Paul Walker build was a stalled build that I had a very long time ago uh, I kind of stalled on it because of the green I used the metallic green and in the movie it's not a metallic green it's just a wild lime green it's very close to that color but it's not metallic but then I end up finishing it and it looked quite well so when you got a stall build maybe you just keep at it don't stop and this one right here is also another stall build I had it almost completely done except for the seats and the body I end up finishing the body and finishing the seats putting it together do a nice buffing job on the coat clear coat did some more weathering on it and it turned out great I put the screens in end up being very happy with the way that turned out so there was two stall builds they probably were both 
actually being worked on at the same time. My 84 Camaro and my Corvette. Now the Corvette was an actual buddy build with me and Sean. We had a lot of fun with that. He built his as a racer and I built mine as a show dragster. Uh, both of those cars turned out great in that buddy build. If you've never seen it, go back and check on Sean's website or his YouTube channel and uh, see what you think of that one. Now the 84 Camaro, that was just a basic build. I didn't spend a lot of time on detailing it, but I just made it a nice clean build. The one thing I didn't like is the tires, as you can see. The engine's not super detailed. And the bottom I did, did a little bit of weathering on the bottom. That was a basic fun kit. Someday I'd like to have the uh, IMSA race version of that kit, which is actually from the same tooling. It has the fender flares and everything. There's my classic Porsche. And my actual original molded Austin Healey. Now that body was actually like six pieces. Glued it all together. Was quite surprised of how well it actually fit together. And the Porsche was the same way. The sides were actually multiple pieces. I had to use super glue and uh, baking soda to fill those and strengthen up that bond. Sanded the hell out of it. Gave it a primer coat, sanded the hell out of that and smoothed it out. The Austin Healy on the other hand, it went together smooth as can be. It was amazing what the designers did back then to actually get a multi-piece body because it was completely flat. So this piece and the sides were all separate and uh, it just turned out amazing so happy I would love to get another one of these if I could find one I'd do it in the race trim so I actually can go with all my race cars because I think it would actually look quite well now this one the actual box art does show it as a at the track so Austin Healy I did the fuel lines I did the carbs, I did the copper lines, that's what they used to do. Uh, yeah, I do have spark plug wires even though it's like super hard to see. So the hood and the trunk both open on both of these. Don't really want to close too well. And then the trunk there's a battery and a spare tire. And the Porsche. I left it so the tunnel cover comes off, but it is missing that side. one I did just get done not too long ago hasn't been that long I did detail the motor I did not wire it because I knew it was gonna be hidden quite well but a lot of the painting and weathering I did in there you can't even see the last video that this one was in the brake lights was not painted they are painted now and the turn signal markers on the front weren't painted they are now Oh no, I didn't break it. The fuel tank, there was a spare tire that was supposed to be going, but the casting I got on this one did not have it, so it didn't get it. That was the only thing on this kit that I did not like was the wheels. I wouldn't have been able to find a replacement wheel that would have worked, but the back wheels do stick out quite a ways. I don't know what they were thinking. Maybe they weren't. Okay, moving on. So this is my 
is a tiger shark. I do believe the doors do open, but they're a pain to get closed. I think I might have even glued them when shut. And then I think that's the 30s. That was a stalled project for quite some time. I finally actually got it all together, finished it up. I did quite a wild leather. I'm going to call it a cowhide leather interior because it is quite wild. I felt I messed that up, but a lot of people said I'd, they liked it, so I just left it. Sometimes you're a little bit over picky. Moving on to something even bigger. This was the new kit that just came out, or new release. All it is is the same cop card that's been out forever. Except for this time, it comes with the logos or decals to actually make it look like it's from the James Bond movie. Diamonds are forever. And I did get the Mustang for that movie to go with this one. I was planning on making a different kit that, but then somebody told me that they were going to release that. So I held off on it and actually did it. And waited for the new one to come in. So that one will be in soon. Or that one is actually here already, but I'll actually be starting it soon. The bottom is very basic. This is one that actually goes together with screws and when you got a kit that goes together with screws they really feel like a die cast car they feel so solid back to another big car this was the first car I ever did that was a rusty this was supposed to be a diamond in the rough kind of build where the guy's actually working on it but it's just so darn cool that he's going to actually drive around in it so detailed the engine made that all detailed up because uh, it's a, such a cool car the guy ain't gonna keep it in the uh, in the garage until the body's done I did the grill where it was all separate this one I did sand off all the sides all the trim on the sides that looked like uh, he taking it off and actually smoothing it he might put it back on he might not we don't know the bottom kind of rusty a little and kind of new wanted a little bit of a combination of both yeah, here's another kit I just finished and another one so there's two triumphs that one wants to roll off so we're not going to keep that one on there you guys just seen it if you haven't there's a video just been out showing them detail on that really turned out great I really love how that one turned out this one is probably one of my favorite kits and one of the biggest things that really grabbed my attention was a big racing yellow lights in there it turned out amazing I don't have as much detail um, I'm not I'm not good like Sean and actually cut the hood out and put an engine in it I'm pretty sure he's done that to this kit before but it is a good uh, kit to just look at from a distance it did come with some photo etch parts come with some beautiful chrome I mean the chrome in that kit was amazing but uh, so there's that one Sunbeam Tiger this one I was going to make look like James Bond. There's somebody else out there that made theirs look like James Bond. And Dr. No, the one thing that James Bond it has is uh, the fins actually go out. Like these are flat. It actually comes out to a point and angles in. Uh, I didn't feel like modifying that. Uh, James Bond has the black interior. And James Bond also was just a sub-beam Alpine, which Alpine was a six-cylinder. This is the Sunbeam Tiger, which the Sunbeam Tiger had. It's a small block V8 Ford engine, I believe. I believe that's what they end up going with. If you ever find it Sunbeam Tiger for sale that's cheap, you probably should buy it. It would be a hell of an investment. There's not many left. Here is the 48-hour 
group build and uh, this was a Tom Daniels kit cherry bomb it is a very simple kit to put together but when you get done you get a very cool result and uh, one of the biggest things I got it for was uh, the 124 scale chopper that was really cool to have that come in and um, I made sure I did the frame and the, everything different really breaking it up a lot of them I see they do everything in the red so I had to make sure I did the fender and the gas tank in red the lights in red and then the actual frame in black kind of give it some contrast cherry bomb I made sure I did the round the turbine engine in black and then these louvers in black just to add a lot of difference to it and then the bottom is pretty basic they do have the drivetrain coming out and the window does open up and I guess it would be like a dick driving a Dixie chopper but laying down and then the detail on the engine I got some gold and stuff in there uh, one of my favorite features of this kit that I added to the build was the wick for the cherry bomb now that wick is some stainless st or steel or stainless steel wire and I just twisted it and then you know, drilled the hole glued it in there and did a black wash on it that black wash highlighted it looks just like a wick that you'd see and since it was the 48 hour build I end up glossing them with future so that way it could be dried in time great build this one was a stalled project forever this is one of Tony Nance dragsters I had the hot rod version where it had um, all three of them in there I had the other two done in 2019 this one sat forever because it was pretty much twisted like a corkscrew it still pretty much is but you know on the kit they had this so it could come apart so what I ended up deciding was pretty much to glue that whole darn thing together and try to get that twist out and the twist is not bad anymore I did try it with hot water and boiling water and everything like that end up just uh, being the best was uh, working it with the other parts and gluing it together and holding it straight and going that route but I'm very happy I finished this kit this was a really cool kit you don't I don't see them anymore readily available of these rails I wish they would have a couple more but I don't really look all the time for them so that might be why I don't see them All right. There's my AMC Gremlin. This was probably one of the ones that uh, I did the most paint work to. Well, probably second most. It was the first time trying to do that much two tone or three tone, that much masking lines, and I didn't do too bad. There wasn't too much bleed through and the bleed through that I did have I was able to wet sand it so you can't have an AMC and not have it red white and blue so there's that one did the blue glass in the back got all detailed up pretty good so very happy with that one So this next two came in a kit together. They're the 132nd scale or 30 
They're usually used for slot cars. I didn't really know that, but they do have model kits for them. These two I actually put together to have it in that diorama, and now I use that diorama for taking pictures and everything else. So, but these were Airfix, which is a marked off of something else. I can't remember the the slot car brand name, but these two went together really nice and easy. They're very detailed for the scale, so it's about the only way I can get that Aston Martin into a model kit without uh, taking a second mortgage out on the home. Uh, the one you find out every once in a while, I think the last time I seen it was over $100. I'm not paying for that. So, I got two more cars left. They're probably two of my favorite ones. So that one is the 41 Ford Woody. I spent a lot of time on this one to make it look great. I used uh, I think it's turquoise. It's a Rust-Oleum metallic, and it looks great against that wood. I think that wood and that chrome. The wheels I took out of a truck kit I had. I think it looks so much better than the stock wheels or the kit wheels that came. But a lot of the extra work I did was I did a lot on the bottom. I'd say the most I did was probably under the hood and in the chassis here inside. So I flocked it the floors I used washi tape on the seats and I had to put the tape together so the pattern matched and then I cleared over that I did do the wood on there and then in the bed it does have a a vinyl liner and the flathead is wi wired I did use the kit big brake kit so I had to modify the axles and everything like that to get that to fit just right. But that's one kit I'm very, very proud of how it turned out. And probably the best one I had this year was this one. So this is, of course, as you all know, is the new, new Tamiya Ford Mustang GT4. I've always liked when they do a Mustang as a Mustang fighter. I've been dying for a kit to actually do that too. And then this kit came out. And I, I started rolling with the idea without even knowing how I was going to do it. And uh, just uh, the inspiration actually took over and it just kept on going. And the kit just kept on getting better and better. So the decals on this one was actually from four or five different kits. It was from the, the original kit itself. Uh, I think a McLaren kit, an airplane plane kit, an actual Mustang. And uh, there's a couple of the little decals I stole off of other ones. But super happy with the way this turned out. I guess once you get a nice inspiration in your head, you uh, make it pretty easy to go with. So I also detailed the inside. make that look like a Mustang as well
<clears throat> so I did the seat in like a leather color. Uh, I did a bunch of wiring inside. I did it with actual wires, some tubes, some strings. So I did some Mod Podge strings in it. And then I also resin casted a few kits to make that engine actually look like it. Because if you remember, it's just like a, a just a block. It kind of resembles a engine, but it's a block. And I still ain't done yet. I still have to do the firewall I have pieces to do the radiator and I have pieces to do the uh, crossbar the sway bar support um, I really need to get working on that I did a seat belt there's to me a seat belt in there it's really hard to see where it's got actually bare metal foil, or not bare metal foil, it, was, it has uh, photo etch parts in there, but uh, yeah, I'd say that's probably my favorite one, if there was car show or model shows going around, uh, this would be one that I'd actually definitely take, and uh, have my fingers crossed to get some kind of award or so so when life goes back to normal it would probably be the that one the the willies and I'd probably take another one but I don't know right off the top of my head which one I'd take to the show but this is going to be a very long video so if you guys watch the whole thing I really appreciate it I appreciate all my subscribers all my viewers everybody who comments I appreciate everything uh, been doing this YouTube for almost two years now it's not a hundred percent two years but it's pretty darn close and I would never thought it was gonna grow as good as it has I am very close to 500 subscribers and uh, it keep on growing and all the good comments and all the views and thumbs up and praise just really helps with this hobby and actually doing the added time to doing the YouTube because um, it does take a lot of time out of our schedules and on our hobby time if you think about it we really could have been working on a model but we're doing videos for everybody we're sharing our builds and getting along and helping each other out learning new things so I'm very appreciative of that and I'm very happy it's growing I hope it continues to grow and until next time I hope you guys have a great day I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you later bye